Hello. In today's video, we're gonna do some bonus setup when it comes to Reaper. You don't necessarily need to go through this, but I recommend you do, especially if you wanna use Reaper as your main DAW, I recommend you go into this. It's optional, but there's some good stuff in here that you might wanna turn on and off and know that it even exists as an option. So let's get into it. So here we are in Reaper. Again, I'm using Reaper 6 and I'm using the default theme here. So it should look the same on your computer, providing you're using the default theme as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Reaper in the top left or find the equivalent in Windows and go to Preferences. Now we have a lot of preferences here and I actually recommend you kind of glance through all of these. We're not going to go into every single one. What we're going to start with is this first option here called General. Now in this very top segment called general, I recommend you look into this maximum undo memory use section right here. And what I set this to, as you can see, is just nine, 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 nine. Basically, I want as many undos that I could possibly have. So basically this saves tons and tons and tons of undo states. So I can just hit command Z over and over and over again so that I never run out. I've never run into a problem where I've needed to undo anything 300 times, but it's good to know that I can should I need to. Now, this next setting here is called Save Undo History with Project Files. So basically, that means when you save, quit, and reopen a Reaper project, you can still undo what you were doing previously. So you can open a project that you were working on two days before, and then hit Command Z a few times and still keep undoing. It doesn't refresh the undo history whenever you reopen that project, especially if you click this one, which I recommend you do, allow load of undo history. So this allows you to load the undo history when you reopen a project so that you can hit Command Z and see what you were just up to whenever you open a project. I haven't used this a ton, but it's good to know that it's there. Makes me feel safe. Next up, we are going to click the section here that says project. So when I click project, you're going to see again, a bunch of settings, but one of the most important things that you'll want to know about is automatic backups. Everything that you do should be backed up all the time so that if anything crashes and Reaper like anything does crash, but it's relatively stable compared to a lot of other things, Pro Tools, Pro Tools, Pro Tools. So I recommend you set up project saving over here. So what I recommend you do is make sure that keep multiple versions is on. There are a whole bunch of other settings, but keeping multiple versions is one of the most key things. And kind of related to the last point, you can also click keep undo histories as well so that it saves all the undo histories. But I actually put this auto saving to every one minute and you can put it any time when the project is stopped and when you're not recording, I put it at any time. So basically you can have the project saving, auto saving, backing up every minute so that you're never gonna lose more than a minute of work. I highly recommend you do this. The backups take basically no space at all. So I just keep a crap ton of backups going at any given time and it makes things so, so much better if anything goes wrong or if I need to go back to a really, really old version of a project just in case. So it's good just to keep things safe. It's just a good idea in general. Now there's a setting here as well called save to project file, which as you can see is not recommended, but I actually really like it. I'll probably be lambasted by tons of sound designers for some of the settings I have here, but these are the settings that I really like and have worked really well for me. So save to project file, which you can even see is not recommended. Basically it will also save my project file every single minute. So I want my project file to be overrided and saved every single minute. I really like that. I just don't like opening up old backup files, but this is totally up to you. It even says not recommended, so maybe keep this checked off, but I like it for my own personal use. So that's what I keep it at, just so you know it exists. Now, next up is in this section called media item defaults. Now, this is a setting that most sound designers say not to have on, but I actually really like to have it on. So maybe you shouldn't, but I really like it. But there's one setting here called create automatic fade in and fade out for new items. And here's the length. So basically an item is any sort of block that you have within Reaper. It could be a audio item. It could be a piece of MIDI, whatever it may be. They call those items as opposed to regions that you'll see in many, many other DAWs. But Reaper also uses the word regions. We'll get into that. So 
basically, if I have an audio file that I drag in to Reaper and it makes a new item out of it, it's going to put a tiny fade in and a tiny fade out. As you can see here, the size is extraordinarily small for the fade in and fade out, basically so that whenever the file starts and whenever it ends, it always starts and ends at zero. It never stops or starts with any sort of audio amplitude playing. I really like this. It keeps things really clean and simple for me. Most sound designers say to actually turn this off. So maybe you should turn it off. I personally prefer to keep it on. So don't at me. This is what I like. But you should know that this is an option that exists. Now, next up is something even more important than everything we've already covered. And that's getting some tea with my good boy Thane. So next up, we are going to go to the audio section. So when I click this audio section, the settings I want you to know about are tiny fade out on playback stop and tiny fade in on playback start. Again, most sound designers recommend you have this off. I like them on because I like the tiny fade in and tiny fade out when I stop and start, but that is completely preferential. If you don't care, if you don't know what this means, you can just leave them off. But one feature that I recommend that you try out, depending on your computer, and maybe some people have issues with this because it says experimental in brackets, but reduce CPU of silent tracks during playback. So tracks that aren't doing anything aren't using as much CPU. I recommend you try this out and see how it works because it saves me a lot of CPU, especially when I have hundreds, if not thousands of tracks all at once in one project, but not all of them are actually doing anything. So I keep this on. You might have issues with it because again, it says experimental, but I really, really like it. So the next section we're gonna go to is called the mute solo section. Now, the first setting that you may be interested in is under this mute settings kind of box and the section automatically mute any track when volume exceeds X amount. So basically if something gets too loud, then it's gonna mute that track, which will save your ears. I use plus 18, I should probably actually turn this down just to be safer, but keep this in mind just so if something really blows up, it's gonna mute that track right away. So you don't have to worry about blowing up your ears too much by mistake. And now this next section, this next box here to tick is so cool and so useful in Reaper. It may not seem super fancy, but I love it. It's called do not process muted tracks. So if you mute a track, it stops processing it entirely. So if you have plugins on there, you have instruments on there and you mute it, it stops taking any CPU power. So if I need to deactivate a track, I don't need to do anything special to it. I don't need to freeze it. I don't need to worry about that. I can just mute those tracks. And then just like that, they don't make any sound and they don't use any CPU anymore. So as I'm working on a giant project with hundreds, if not thousands of sounds, I can just mute all the older stuff as I'm going. So they're not taking any extra CPU. Very, very handy. I highly recommend keeping this on. Now for this next section here, you can see I dragged in a sound file here just from my library. But what we're gonna do is tweak a little setting that you may really like to know about. And that's going to appearance, and media. So when you go to appearance media, the one thing I recommend you look at, which is a kind of niggling thing, but I actually really, really like that they give you the option is item volume control here at the bottom. And you'll see a few options where it says handle zero DB is at top of item handle zero DB is at center of item and knob. So basically these allow you to control what's known as clip gain in a lot of different DAWs. So for example, I have this audio file here. Now my setting is set to knob. So at the top left of any audio item that you can see right here, there's a little knob. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And if I click and drag that knob up and down, you can see it's kind of a white circle in the top left. I am turning the volume of that specific audio item up and down. Now I prefer having the knob, but some of you may actually prefer having the handle. Handle can be hard to see sometimes. I prefer the knob because it's really easy to see all the time. But let's say I turn it to handle and zero dB, dB is at center of item. You can see very faintly that there's a line that I'm dragging up and down on this item to change. And when it's at the center of this item, it's at zero dB, zero decibels. Basically it's at its natural volume. And I can also choose handle zero dB is at top of item, meaning 
when this handle is all the way at the top, it's at its natural imported volume, and I can drag this up and down to make it quieter. I prefer having the knob easier, easier to see. I don't have to find the handle on any individual item. The knob is always in the top left. It makes things a little easier. Okay, that's it for this little bonus episode. I know it was short, but I wanted to make sure that you have some extra idea of all the stuff that you can set up within Reaper. There is other stuff that you can do. I recommend you do a quick glance of everything that's in there because you'll probably be surprised that, oh, you can change that in this program? Reaper's crazy customizable. So if you take a look, you might see some settings that you'll really like to tweak. But that's it for today's video. If you like this, please like and subscribe and all that sort of good stuff. And also sign up for my newsletter if you wanna make a career as a game audio professional. So whether you're a composer or a sound designer or anything like that, I have two free courses that teach you how to work in the game industry and tons of articles on how to create great sound and how to actually build an amazing enviable career in the game industry. So thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.